I thought I'd try something different for random review today, namely taking a look at a DX Super Sentai toy. Now, typically on DX toys, I wait until I can give a full scripted review, but for this, I would also need the Gokai Saber, which is really expensive to get a hold of, and that's uh, not quite an option. So we'll go ahead and take a look at just the one that came in recently, and I've been in love with this thing. This keeps getting picked up and tossed around and played with uh, ever since it got here. This is the DX Gokai Gun. He's signature sidearm of Kaizoku Sentai Gokaiger. A little old now, but hey, still serviceable. Mine is second hand, so you will excuse a few little nicks and wear spots here on the paint. But for the most part, perfectly serviceable example of the breed. As you can see, cast almost entirely in black plastic with a few bits here done up in gray, and everything else is painted. Absolutely lavished with the paint. Not only this very brilliant gloss red, but also that brilliant kind of shimmering silver that Bandai loves so much, that I love so much, because it does look really, really nice. As it hit a blue across there, just to remind you, hey, it's still a toy, it still has to be a little bit colorful. But it still has a few bits of uh, regalness that you would expect from like a Captain's Flintlock. Namely, that gold trim along the handle. I wish there was a little bit more of that gold here and there. Just a little bit touching it up. Just giving it a little bit more of a grand nature. Still extremely cool because it's black, red, and silver. It's one of the... It's one color scheme you just... It's hard to get wrong. You just almost can't. You see, nice big Go Kaiger symbol just laid out in the front. I like the mechanical details exposed, too. It gives it a little bit of makeshift appearance that you'd expect out of something a pirate whipped up. And you can see it extending down below the symbol as well in little pipes and tubings to lead down to the button here. Where again, in case you hadn't noticed, they're pirates. So of course they have the symbol on three spots of their device. You can't fault them just because they're pirates doesn't mean they're not good at branding. So yeah, all around, extremely nice deco, extremely nice form. I like some of the... Uh, classic touches and the futuristic. I like old school and new school tech combined and there's other toys that I gotta show you someday that show that example even more. So this big thing down here is a button which will pop up the tumbler inside which is where we will eventually need a go kai key. You can see little subtle details, well not so subtle, it's in bright red telling you which direction to actually turn the key and that this big arrow thing Cleverly disguised as little randomly painted black details actually telling you which way the key goes in. Okay, yeah, I have to remember it's for kids, so some things just have to be pointed out very obviously. But yeah, we'll see that here in a minute. For now, we actually have to turn the thing on in order to actually hear anything. There's just some sound effects you just hear and you immediately want to go watch the show it came from. Like, noises like that just really make me miss Gokaiger, especially now because I've skipped so many Sentais as of late. Yeah, very familiar noise when turning on. There's not too many functions on this one. The Gokai Saber has a lot of different LED and color effects. This one just is just a sound toy, which I guess is the trade-off because this also comes a lot cheaper than the Gokai Saber itself. I guess that lets you... Uh, pick and choose rather than have the same big expense on both toys. Alright, so what do we do? Well, for starters we can pull the trigger. And the speaker is actually located, I love this, inside the muzzle. And that's actually the most appropriate place to put a speaker on a toy gun now, isn't it? And this is one of the few times it's actually large enough for that. But I do like that. I like that black powder explosion you can hear. It's a little, it's a little bit digitized, but you get the, you get the idea. Like it. Now, if you notice, it wasn't quite the same. Here, I'll play them back to back a few times. Just, just listen carefully. See that? Two different sound effects going into that. That's because this is old school. It's pack your own black powder. It's not a form fit. Everyone's made the same bullet, which meant. Every explosion from the shots sounds a little bit different from each other. It's an extremely subtle touch to historic accuracy that they incorporated in. And I 
super appreciate that. That is such a tiny detail, but it's a really cool one. All right, so, well, we're, we've got more functions, but we're going to need a ranger key, so I guess we take this aside, and we will tell you that the ranger key, Gokai Blue, is the one that comes with this one. Kind of interesting, because he was one of the sword guys. Interesting enough, the Gokai Saber, I believe, comes with Luka, the other, the other uh, sword swinger on the team. This is uh, a little bit of a strange choice. I'd have gone with Doc, maybe, but, but whatever. This was a popular one, so might as well. I always like the Ranger Key gimmick. It's such a nice little... It's just to have, like, little tiny minifigures of the, of the Rangers. And the fact that they made, like, every single one always impressed me. Uh, not too bad on this one. Gold, black, little tiny sigil there on the chest. It's on his head, too, but the paint's a little bit worn there, unfortunately. But yeah, once again, branding. Always like the Gokaiger designs. So, simple transformation. Jeez, even when I'm not reviewing a transformer, I'm showing transformations. Arms up, pants up to reveal the key itself. Now, important to remember, this thing doesn't really know which key is which. There's no light gimmick to switch in between. There isn't even like a little red LED or anything. It's just sounds. So it can't really tell the difference. Any key, any key, like yes, even the Metal Heroes, even the common Riders, all of them will just say the exact same noises in this thing. So don't expect anything special. So let's go. See, I really expected a noise when I inserted it for the first time, but I guess not. That's familiar. Big final explosion. And it'll repeat that until you take the key out. Very satisfying noise. See, I guess it's just the years of playing with the morpher from this series where I'm expecting like everything I do with the key to actually activate a noise, but guess not. Still a lot of function that makes you feel like you're actually working with a Sentai's weapon. To have every, almost every little thing make a noise when you play with it. Only one other thing to do, if I hold down the trigger, I do get a special sound effect. Again, that voice, I want to go watch Gokaiger again. It's been a long time, man, I miss that series. But yeah, in uh, an abbreviated form, let's go go Kaiger. Just as a hidden little noise. Nice. Nice all around. So in a quick and easy review, that is the Gokai gun. A lot of classic details, a lot of futuristic ones combined in an aesthetic I really dig. And of course, like I said, black and red and silver, very hard to go wrong. The sound effects are simple to accommodate its simpler price point compared to the Gokai Saber, especially on the aftermarket. I got this thing pretty inexpensively out of Japan, whereas the Saber itself is still commanding enormous dollar and still eludes my collection. But for what you get, it's a nice package if you can get it cheaply enough. And one thing I didn't even get to explain, one thing that's hard to explain on camera, it just feels good. The grip is comfortable, it's balanced well. I think that's because the gimmick is all located in the center mass, where uh, where all the he the weight and the heft of an actual gun or flintlock would be. You know, just compare, like, I just got Kamen Rider Snipes gun, where everything is weighed to the back, and it doesn't quite feel as good as this one does. So just on a tactile level, this is also a really satisfying experience. So... I paid like 20 bucks for mine, that comes with all these little paint scrapes and worn out parts, etc. And that was out of Japan, so you're looking somewhere in the 30 maybe $40 range if you're going to eBay and looking for something. And 40 is about the absolute most if it's in pristine condition. Um, that's about, you know, and that really depends on your love of Gokaiger. So, uh, maybe that was helpful to someone, maybe I'm just goofing around with a toy that just came in and I'm really into, but whatever. It's fun, isn't it? That's the point.